Good afternoon, everyone. It's such an honor to be uh, invited to be here. Um, so I think uh, what I would like to do is uh, trying to give you a little bit of an overview. So we all know, or maybe not quite know about how our hearts formed uh, genetically and the environmental contribution to the process of the heart formation. For this audience, uh, we don't really have to go through the detail about this uh, process. And again, we may or may not know exactly how our heart went wrong and uh, get the trouble, get the diseases such as uh, like uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and uh, dynamic cardiomyopathy. So I think what I want to share with you uh, is some of our studies in the area of microRNAs that recognize different aspects of the heart, heart formation, cardiac remodeling, and some of the disease status. I want to give a little bit of the summary of how we initially get started, how to uh, investigate, study the global function of microRNAs in the heart. Then I will give you a couple of quick examples of how we study cardiac specific microRNAs, what's the function of there. Uh, I will spend a little bit more time to talk about uh, some of molecular mechanisms of how microRNAs participate in the recognition of the gene expressing and uh, during the process of the heart function. And if I still have a little bit of time at the end, I will share with you some of our recent studies that uh, is uh, focused on some RNA binding proteins that recognize the splicing process of uh, T gene that is involved in the cardiac myopathy. So let's go back a little bit. We all now know microRNAs. When we started about 20 years ago, we really were asking very fundamental questions that's like how important are microRNAs to the heart? So one of my former graduate students, Jeff Chen, decided to address this question by taking genetic approach to knock out one of the key enzymes that is essential for biogenesis of microRNA pathways. So microRNA genes, just like our protein encoded genes, they are encoded, they are existed in our genomic DNA and uh, they are processed to make those non-coding small RNAs called microRNAs, transcriptionally and post-transcriptionally regulated gene expressing. So to address the question of how important the microRNAs to the heart, Jeff specifically knock out this dicer, which again, as I said, is essential for the biogenesis of microRNA in the heart. We took this cray Luxby system with a cardiac outside specific cray, mouse have to driving cray cross into the flux the mice. That's frank the key region of the dicer gene. Then after we generated those mice, we noticed that the newborn mice were uh, pretty much are born and die. And uh, what we observed was those hearts were remodeled in a way it looks like a congestive cardiac failure. Well, the ventricle was dilated. You can see from this image here, uh, there is accumulated the thrombins and the blood. Then we went on to characterize those mutant mice, and we noticed that the microRNA genes, their biogenesis pathway was blocked, and most of microRNAs were dysregulated. Then the uh, expression of many genes that encoding for the contractile proteins, like myosin, troponins, they were dysregulated. Then the sarcomere was an not properly assembled, the heart really cannot properly form all those animals die postnatally. So this is a very simple, straightforward study, basically answer the question that is how important are microRNAs to the heart? The short answer is very essential. If you block this pathway, 
in using genetic approach, basically you cannot have a proper heart formation function. We did a very similar study, block the formation of microRNAs in neural crest cells, because at the time we were very interested in the neural crest cells. We knew that those group of progenitor cells migrate through the development of fringe arch into cranial fascia, as well as the cardiovascular system contributed the essential formation of many of the developmental processes. And a mutation of some of the important genes cause the cranial facial and the cardiovascular defect. So we made the similar mice using the Cray Knox P16, using the Win1 Cray to denote out the diester in neural crest cells. So what we observed was a very severe cranial facial development defect as shown in the diagram. And uh, we also saw very severe cardiovascular defect, including the truncated aorta, the ventricle septum defect. So again, this is again very simple genetic study demonstrated that those microRNAs they are no matter expressed in the cardiomyocytes or in some of the developmental um, essential progenitor cells, they are so essential for the formation of a proper uh, embryonic parts, the cranial facial and the cardiovascular system. Then we move on, try to uh, identify and study some of the, the muscle expressed, the cardiac muscle and the skeletal muscle expressed the microRNAs. At the time, several other investigators, like Eric Orson's group, or Deepak, Srirasvat, Pava's group, also focused on studying some of the microRNAs. So we are published multiple works, uh, demonstrated some of the muscle expressed microRNAs. In this case, mirror one and 132, they uh, really contributed to the very important process of myocyte proliferation and a differentiation process, both in cardiac and skeletal muscle. And uh, one of the mechanisms for those microRNAs function is uh, regulating the transcription factors that have already been very well known to contribute to the development and the gene regulation process, like uh, SRF or HDAX or MEF2 family of transcription factors. Uh, another uh, muscle specifically expressed microRNAs we've been studying together with Eric Orson's group as well is this called a mirror 28A and a 28B. When those microRNAs were initially identified, we were all very surprised to know that they were encoded by the introns of those uh, structural protein genes. In this case, so-called MIR-28A was encoded in the intron of the so-called alpha messenger heavy chain gene. There is a homologue 28B encoded in the intron of beta messenger heavy chain genes. The alpha and beta messenger heavy chain genes have been studied for a long time. We know those are essential succamere proteins and they are essential for the contractivity of the heart. But it was not known that in the intron of those genes, actually they are heightened microRNA genes. Uh, so Tom Connors, he was also a former student that really focused on this microRNA. And the initial we showed that this microRNA genes uh, is uh, very specifically expressed only in the heart during the embryonic stage, neonatal stage, or in adult tissues. So we decided to take both gamma function and lasso function approaches to knock out this microRNA or overexpress those microRNAs. Erica Orson's group published a beautiful science paper showing knockout to it A uh, in the heart, uh, really planted the uh, stress response of the heart to hypertrophy. So we uh, overexpress this microRNA using the tetracycline uh, response to the system to overexpress to it eight in the heart. What we achieved was about four to five fold of overexpressing. And we observed that if you overexpress only this microRNA, which is about 23 nucleotide in length, 
that was sufficient to induce hypertrophic growth in the heart. So the transgenic mice, their hearts are substantially larger. And uh, you can see that from the cross from morphology of the heart, from histology, and from the measurement of the uh, really um, uh, heart and mouth side the transverse area. So that actually demonstrated that those tissue specifically expressed microRNAs, they play a very important role in response to remodeling. I will come back to this microRNA later during my talk. We have also studied several microRNAs. In this case, MIRO22, that was uh, studied by one of uh, my former poster, JP Huang. So he is an independent investigator. Right now. So what we initially observed was the MIRO22 expression was dramatically induced during hypertrophic growth in mouse hearts. So we again made a transgenic mice and a knockout mice to study those microRNA. What we found initially was a little bit disappointed uh, when we knocked out the MIR-22, there was no phenotype associated with it. Then when we start to stress those animals, we start to realize, okay, this microRNA play a very important role in response to uh, pressure over the stress or uh, uh, isoprotenol induced uh, stress to remodel the heart. Okay, so this suggests some of my clients, they don't seem to be so essential for the normal development or function of the heart. However, they are so important for the heart to respond to stress. Another uh, family of microRNAs being studied is the mirror 1792. This was conducted by Jing Hai Chen, another former postdoc. He is also an independent investigator right now. So, what we initially uh, interested in this microRNAs were we observed that those microRNAs was highly expressed in the proliferation cardiomyocytes, but the dramatic downregulated in adult cardiomyocytes. This microRNA, actually, by the time we studied, it has been very well studied in cancer context, where it was shown this, can, this microRNA cluster was amplified or uh, induced in many cancers. So this has been called a mirror mer one uh, for some case. So Jing Hai asked whether this microRNA cluster is uh, important for mouse proliferation or potential cardiac regeneration. Again, we use the mouse model, took a genetic approach. We first knock out this cluster of microRNA in a developing heart. In this case, we use the NKK 2.5 CRE. What we observed was if you basically denate out a 1792 in the heart, you got a smaller heart, and this is postnatal day two heart, and there was a decrease in the uh, proliferation of cardiomyocytes. Conversely, we made the inducible transgenic mice, where we again use NKX, NKX 2.5 create to induce the overexpressing of this cluster only in cardiomyocytes, in this case, the embryonic heart, we over, over, or observed a dramatic increase of myocytic proliferation, much hyperplasia uh, heart. Then we induce the overexpressing those in postnatal heart, use alpha mesin heptian cray. We observed that this was sufficient to induce the growth of the heart, increase myocyte proliferation, even in the postnatal heart. Finally, we decided to induce the overexpressing in the adult heart using the mer kramer system, where we started your tamoxifen to treat those hearts in two-month-old mice, and we asked whether this overexpression of 1792 was still able to induce adult myocyte re-enter the cell cycle or induce myocyte proliferation. The answer is yes. Uh, so basically we got a bigger heart, more cardiomyocytes, and I don't have time to share the detail because this is a published work, 
we use the cell proliferation marker to check uh, we count the actual cell numbers. We show that if you overexpress those 1792, that was sufficient to induce mouse cell proliferation, even in adulthood, and that was more cell numbers. So um, the mechanism at the time we proposed was a member of this 1792 cluster, which included seven, six members of microns, uh, was uh, sufficient and uh, uh, essential for the proliferation of cardamal sites, in part by replacing its target, that's the P10. P10 is being well known to be a tumor suppressor. Um, so it's a negative regulator for cell proliferation. So we published this work, and then we continue to study this. We were asking two questions. One is which member of the 1792 uh, cluster that's really contributed to the cell proliferation or cortical regeneration uh, function? And we narrowed down to 19. Then we decide to, okay, uh, next uh, we ask if we deliver 19, middle 19 into the heart and induce myocardial infarction uh, to see whether that is uh, protective to the heart or can enhance uh, cardiac regeneration. This is what we did. Here is how we did it. We initially basically uh, in mouse model, induce myocardial uh, infarction. At the same time, we inject the mimics into the heart. Then we follow up those animals with the echo for their function. And uh, then we harvest and then look at the, the heart morphology. So basically what we observe was if we overexpress those microRNA 1792 inject and mimic, that really protects the heart from the myocardial infarction induced uh, an injury. You can see here, uh, we got a much more uh, myocardial um, muscle here preserved and the uh, infar infarction uh, was reduced. And we also checked the fraction shortening of those hearts. And there is a much better cardiac function here. And uh, we also observed the like a, um, uh, left ventricle internal dimension was also reduced. Um, then we uh, demonstrated that those microRNA was sufficient to really protect the heart from um, myocardial infarction and has some potential for regeneration. And we previously show that P10 is one of the targets uh, repressed by those microRNAs. Then we ask whether P10 itself play a role over there or not. So we decide to knock out a P10 um, <clears throat> and then induce myocardial infarction and again follow up with those hearts to see whether there is a difference over there or not. So here showing you some of, again, the fraction shortening or uh, nephroventricle dimension, you can see that if you knock out uh, P10 and induce myocardial infarction, the cardiac function is uh, somehow preserved, but then it's partially preserved in those uh, uh, knockout hearts. And the dimension is also uh, getting uh, prevent some of the di dilation. Now we carefully uh, look at the histology and uh, using uh, proliferation markers to check whether there is a difference in myocyte proliferation. In this case, we use a EDU to uh, really trace those proliferating cardiac myocytes in here. You can see we use a cardiac troponin T to mark all the cardiac myocytes, and of course, a DAPI mark all those nuclei. Then here is the EDU signal, and you can see there is an increase in this KO hearts um, under the stress condition. Here is some quantification uh, to confirm that we use a pH3. This is a possible histone H3, which marked the mitosis. Again, we observe increases of that. 
We also use ROB to stain this cytokinesis event. And again, we observe there was increase. So if you look at it in the uh, overall, the heart, um, again, when we knock out uh, P10, there is a better uh, cardiac um, uh, tissue preservation uh, in, in response to MI. Then we also, to independent confirm this, we use a P10 inhibitor to treat those animals and induce myocardial infarction. We observe very similar uh, protection over there. To further confirm this observation, we actually need to trace the cardiomyocytes in those animal P10 nakama, and we believe we observe that some of this proliferated cardiomyocytes in response to myocardial infarction seems to come from the existing cardiomyocytes. This observation is uh, consistent with this, like uh, Ken Pass and others reported that uh, somehow in adult hearts, some of the cardiomyocytes can de differentiate, re enter the proliferation and uh, uh, really help to regrow some of the heart. Of course, Jim Martin has shown beautifully that the hippo yap pathway also does this uh, function over there. So really in those series of studies, we were able to demonstrate that um, multiple microRNAs, either tissue specific expressed in the heart or in the skeletal muscle, like a mirror one, 133, 280A, 280B, they play pretty important roles in regulating the process of cardiac function, remodeling. We also demonstrated some other microRNAs, like a mirror 19, contribute to the, uh, the uh, myocyte proliferation and the cardiac regeneration process. But we still don't um, fully understood um, the molecular mechanism and some of the molecular pathways that really contribute to the specificity of some of the microRNA function. So Jian Ding is a former poster in the lab. Uh, he decided to uh, study um, like a microRNA uh, function and a specificity in a little bit more detail. He decided to focus on this molecule called TRBP. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this is RNA binding protein. So I will just give you a little bit of background. This is the RNA binding protein has been study report more than 30 years, or years ago. It was found bind to HIV RNA, but the RNA binding protein, and it contains two double strand RNA binding domains when initially discovered, and it was shown to be pretty broadly expressed. And the conventional knockout for TRPP also been generated many years ago. It was shown that the TRPP is essential for proper development of animals because the TRPP conventional knockout mice die postnatally quick and after birth, animal die. But the reason for the death and the, the defects were not very well characterized. Then part of the crew come from an earlier study in the microRNA uh, research. That was when uh, investigators use a dicer to pull down its interaction proteins, TRBP co-precipitated with dicer, suggesting this TRBP RNA binding protein could be a co-partner uh, or uh, in the complex of the microRNA biogenesis pathway. So we decided to more specifically study the function of TRPP and more specifically we want to use TRPP to understand how those microRNA regulated there really specifically contribute to the biological processes. What we did was we uh, generated a uh, flex layer of TRPP gene, then we uh, basically knocked it out using that global knockout approach and we basically recapture that if you knock out the 
KRPP, uh, that result in postnatalnitality that was a, a very thin copy what's been reported. But we were most interested in the heart. So in this case, we decided to not put a TRPP only in the cardiomyocyte. site. Again, we use the cardiac troponin T driving create to specifically denit a TRPP in the heart. So here showing you the uh, PCR, the uh, TRPP transcript scan, and here showing you Western blood that in the TRPP knockout the heart, the protein is gone as well. Now, if you look at those animals uh, for their gross morphology, here I'm showing you those P2.5 up to two months old mouse hearts. On the top panel is the wall type control. So this is just a very beautiful heart as we all love. And here is a newborn. And here is a two month old adult mouse heart. And we have a uh, again, very smooth ventricle and the two atriums. We immediately noticed that if you knock out the TRPP, those hearts look like a morphological change, particularly around a three week to month to one month old. You pretty much always observe there's a dynamic ventricle, dramatic dynamic atriums. This phenotype is 100% penetrated. And the poster at the end did not have to really genotype those mice. When he harvests those animals, open the chest, he said, oh, this is a knockout. So this phenotype can be verified by histology. I'm showing you how this dynamic atrium and ventricles in those. And we observe that if you knock out a TRPP only in the heart, most animals start to die around two weeks of age, and about half of them die around two months old, and all of them die out probably in, uh, in eight months or so. And we measure the cardiac function with the echocardiography of M mode. You can see uh, in this heart of uh, TRPP knockout, the cardiac contraction was dramatically decreased. There is a quantification uh, of this uh, left ventricle um, uh, internal dimension diastolic or this is systolic. And if you calculate the fraction shortening, you can see about two weeks old when those mice uh, were born, their cardiac function uh, started to decrease uh, with a static statistically significant. And uh, so this study basically indicated this TRBP clearly play an important role in the heart in cardiomyocytes, but we don't understand the mechanism. So we were just like most other investigators, we start to search for the mechanism. The first thing we did was we perform RNA-seq. So from the RNA-seq profiling, we observe many genes were upregulated, many genes were downregulated, and it's uh, very hard to sort them out. So we uh, verify many of them, then uh, trying to search more and trying to read more about it until we notice that, that those group of genes, sorry, let's go back, uh, were upregulated. Well, for many of us, probably. We don't know exactly what they are, but those are uh, genes encoding for different uh, contractor protein, sarcomere proteins. And the upper part of the red one, upper regulated, are so-called uh, fast twitch myofibril genes in skeletal muscle. And then this green one is called a slow twitch myofibril genes in skeletal muscle. And together, we also know that SUC6 was upper regulated over there. So here is a qPCR verification for those upper or down regulated genes. Okay. This change is very dramatic. That's among many of the dysregulated genes, the so-called fast and tw slow twitch myofibril genes were very uh, consistent. And SUC6 actually has been studied in the skeletal muscle, but not that much in the cardiac muscle. 
my former mentor, Eric Arsene's group, was showing that the SOC 6 indeed recognized the so called fast and snow twitch myofiber gene expression in skeletal muscle. In this beautiful PNS paper, they again proposed this model that SOC 6 repressed those snow twitch myofiber in skeletal muscle. So where we have many cardiologists, we have many uh, cardiac researchers here. Uh, in the heart, we often heard about a fetal gene expressing, adult gene expressing, the sarcomere genes, but we rarely heard people talk about snow twitching, fast twitching myofibro genes. So we thought this might be something quite interesting. Maybe there is some of the switch among those contracted proteins. So we are then coming out with the hypothesis to test. We thought, okay, somehow uh, TRBP repressed SUC6. Then SUC6 repressed the expression of snow twitching myofibro gene expression. Then if we are not got a TRBP, we saw SUC6 never went up in the heart. Uh, as a result, then the snow twitching myofibro gene got down regulated. This is a hypothesis you really can test it. So we decide to test this hypothesis. Then the first thing we ask is, if we knock down SUC6, can we uh, rescue the TRPP knockout phenotype? So this is what we did. We use the ethanol associated virus AAV system to knock down SUC6 with HHRNA. So here you are here is the RNA, uh, PCR data showing you can use shRNA to knock down SUC6. Now, if you look at the heart, you're gonna see those images over and over. Here again is the control heart. Here is our TRPP knockout. And you can see again, dilated ventricle, dilated atriums. Here is our control AV SUC6 knocking down. There is no difference between this and the control. Here is the AV uh, SOC6 knocking down heart in the TRPP. You can see this morphology of the heart is fully rescued. This heart is almost indistinguishable from that of a control or the uh, knocking down heart. And again, if you look at the histology, that is pretty much a normal heart morphology. Probably the most convincing thing coming from this echo data. Again, here is the control, here is the TRPP knockout heart function dramatically decreased. Then if you knock down SUC6 and the cardiac function is really uh, restored, here is some quantification. If you look at the expressing of a uh, um, pathological marker like MP, in this case, you can see MP level was really repressed. And then uh, we look at the so-called like, fast and the slow twitch myofiber gene program and they pretty much can be uh, rescued or restored in this fast amount fiber genes that were repressed in most of the case in this SHRNA knocking down. And the snow twitch myofiber genes here were many of them were again rescued. I guess the most convincing evidence coming from the animal surviving uh, curve. So this is TRPP knockout mice, they start to die. But if you knock down uh, SUC6, in this case, you can see those animals really can survive much better. So that's really demonstrate indeed that SUC6 here uh, meted the function of TRPP. If you knock down SUC6, you are able to partially rescue this phenotype. We then ask us, say, well, if you overexpress SUC6 itself in what type of background without it, uh, disturbing the TRPP, were you able to induce the phenotype? So we decide to uh, basically overexpress SUC6 using again AAV system in what type of animals. And uh, to our surprise, uh, we were able to uh, phenocopy uh, TRPP knockout phenotype. Again, you've got a very dramatic dilated ventricle and uh, atrium. And the cardiac function is impaired over there. And those animals also die, very similar to what you observed in this TRPP knockout mice. 
So the SUC6 working downstream of TRBP was necessary and sufficient to induce this cardiac myopathic phenotype. So we were pretty happy about this result, but we still have a big question to answer. That is, how does this TRBP really repress SUC6? We still don't know the mechanism and the targets. So we decided to, as I already gave to you some of the clues, that is the Nikon TRBP regular microRNA biogenesis. We decided to do small RNA RNA seq. So in this case, we did this uh, small RNA RNA seq and uh, detected the differential expressed microRNAs. Well, there were two surprises to us. One is it was suggested that the TRBP is essential for microRNA biogenesis. But what we found when we knock out the TRBP, uh, only a very small fraction of microRNAs were changed, which is in sharp contract with what we initially started for Dicer. I told you about the Dicer knockout phenotype. I did not have time to show you the RNA seq data. But at the time when we knock out a dicer in the heart, we observed that the majority of microRNA expression were abolished. So dicer is essential for microRNA biogenesis, but TRBP is not. We use a 1.5 fold of a cutoff up or down regulated microRNAs. We only see very small fraction of those microRNAs were changed. Then we are trying to zoom in a little bit further, say, both the 5P and the 3P of the microRNAs, which of those microRNAs were dysregulated, and the we narrowed down to three member of them, that is a Mirtoid A, and uh, 504 and 499. We and the DPAC group previously showing that actually 499 uh, was encoded by another myosin heavy chain gene, and it worked downstream of to it a so we thought okay to it a probably working upstream of 499 and a 504 we look at its expression is not very highly expressed in the heart so we decided to come back to it a and we verify here is the in the trpp knockout heart to it a was dramatically down regulated and there are several other microRNAs that were dysregulated. Showing you here is a northern blood of mature microRNA you can see to it is down regulated and the precursor was increased. As I told you, we have previously generated mere 2 8 transgenic mice and we show this microRNA was sufficient to induce hypertrophy. Then here we coming back to this, we ask if we overexpress this microRNA to it A, was that sufficient to rescue the phenotype or contribute to the phenotype we observe? So we decided to cross the transgenic mice we previously made into this TRBP knockout mice. Uh, this is a little bit of busy slide, but it's a very simple message here is the expression of 2 a in our transgen in our control mice, in our TRBP knockout mice, you can see 2 a is gone. The third name is our transgenic mice, you can see overexpression of 2 a And the fourth name is the compound mice, where you have 2 a transgene and the TRBP knockout. What you got is pretty much you restore the level of 2 a to pretty much compatible with that of uh, control mice. Here is the QPCR. And um, now if you look at those hearts, again, I told you, you're gonna see this uh, images over and over. There are different hearts, okay, trust me, but they're very similar phenotype like this. So in the TRBP knockout hearts, you get a dilated ventricle, dilated atrium, here are transgenic mice for 2 a you got a hypertrophic bigger hearts. Here's our compound mice. You really rescue this TRBP knockout phenotype. You got a smaller heart, normal heart. And again, most important uh, that those compound mice really can survive now, where they, again, TRBP cardiac knockout mice, they all die, just like what I showed you before within about eight months.
So what this says is indeed the toroid A function downstream of this uh, TRBP to regulate its function. Um, so we check uh, all this uh, cardiac functions and uh, uh, cardiac myopathy markers, MP, and to check this fast twitch myofiber gene expressing, slow twitch myofiber genes, they all been really reversed back, rescued. I guess so uh, with that, basically we suggest that uh, this TRPP really specific and recognize cardiac function through a microRNA mediated the SOX6 uh, rep repressing. This study is um, really offers several lessons we learned from, because at the time we studied this, we initially thought that most of the microRNA genes or microRNAs, their function are modulate many of their targets because many of the mRNA genes at their three prime UTR region contains multiple possible microRNA targeting sites. So it has been suggested that the mRNAs will be modulated by many microRNAs. Similarly, each microRNAs could target multiple mRNA targets. So it has been pretty much suggested that microRNA functions will be mediated by multiple targets. It's hard to believe that the microRNA and their targets sometimes build up their linear functional correlation. So in this particular study, we saw that TRBP RNA binding protein very specifically contribute to the biogenesis process of tissue specific microRNA to it A. Then the function of to it A in the heart is pretty much mediated by the targeted SOX6. Then SOX6 will modulate the expressing of many of the contractile proteins, in this case called uh, fast and slow twitch myofiber gene, and that really we believe affect the physiology of the heart in this scenario. So we learned that again, some of the microRNAs could function in an inner manner to modulate the function, and that some of the microRNAs has the potential to be a, a therapeutic target for some of the cardiac diseases. We are continuing to learning about this, uh, several unanswered questions for this. We still don't know how the specificity of a TRBP function in regulating mutoid A is defined. Because in vivo, actually, we saw that only a very small fraction of microRNAs were dysregulated by TRBP knockout in the TRBP knockout heart. But we had done some in vitro biochemistry study trying to see how TRBP working with the dicer to recognize the different microRNA process. In vitro, we observe a little bit different uh, uh, result. That is, the specificity was not there. For example, TRBP could really recognize the mirror one, mirror 133 uh, biogenesis in vitro. But in vivo, we observe if you knock out a TRBP, mirror one biogenesis, mirror 130 was not affected. So their in vitro, in vivo are different and probably some additional cofactors are there. And another unanswered question, of course, we are following up is whether this is so-called fast or slow twitch myofiber genes, which have been very well demonstrated in skeletal muscle, whether those guys play a very important role in cardiac function, particularly in the pathological remodeling in the heart. So we are still uh, kind of excited about to study more of those. I mean, one of the challenges we are facing in this scenario is we actually don't have a very good hands-on this real proteins for those so-called again fast snow twitch my fiber proteins because many of antibodies we tested they seem to recognize cross exam cross recognize many of those uh, myofibers. So we need to generate a more specific antibody to really show this. And uh, in this case, we could 
really more comfortable and see whether those uh, different myofiber types really contribute to disease or uh, conditions. All right, so maybe I saw I still have a few minutes. Uh, maybe I can quickly share with you. Um, okay, here is my summary. I already pretty much talk about the first summary. I show you dicer and microRNAs are essential for normal cardiac function and the gene expression of contractor proteins. We studied quite a few of the cardiac expressed microRNAs and it demonstrated they really recognize different uh, process of cardiac remodeling and then uh, mirror linking A and B uh, really and the target P10 directly recognize the mass at point of breaking cardiac regeneration and the mirror to A and the, its upstream TRPP and the downstream sub six also recognize the heart development and funds. So again, last few minutes, I will share with you some of the unstudied non-published study involving microRNA uh, RNA binding protein in the heart development. This is the gene called PCBP1. So we initially studied PCBP, which is called a policy binding protein. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. It's been well studied, the multifunctional protein. We initially thought this protein contribute to microRNA biogenesis pathway. And we made the knockout studies in skeletal muscle. We show that if you knock out the PCBP in skeletal muscle, the development of mice were uh, impaired and uh, some of the muscle microRNA were down regulated. But in the heart, we did not see that much. So we decided to study the heart more extensively we studied the cardiac specific knockout of the PCBP and uh, showing you here is the embryonic phenotype. Basically, you got those uh, uh, E16.5 with the um, defect in the apex and uh, you have a defect in the compact zone on F ventricle. And um, uh, about half of those animals die during the earlier uh, postnatal stage and those survived ones later on different developed a, a separate sets of defect. Um, so we of course again trying to understand the mechanism we perform RNA seq from the E16.5 hearts and here is the analysis of the transcriptome just like everyone does and we found that there were up down recognized genes. And the key observation was those so-called upper recognized genes in this mutant heart seems to be down recognized in the natal embryonic heart development. And conversely, those so-called down recognized genes in the KO mice were initially um, much upper recognized in the natal state. So it's twisting of the words. The basic observation is uh, that not so PCBP1 results in a development of DNA in the heart, if you put it now. And we check some of the markers and we observe some of the ectopic expressed in the KO heart, you can see here. And the increased MP was expanded expressed. So that still did not really explain to us what's the mechanism. So we decide to uh, go deeper look at the splicing. So we analyze the splicing event in those PCPP knockout hearts. And we observe a different spectrum of different splicing changes. In particular, we observe the defect in the splicing of this gene called ARS2. Uh, more specifically, the exon 16 of this ARS2, you can see the skipped here is the control RNA seq. You can see normal splicing event. Uh, here's uh, exon 16 is spliced in, but if you knock out the tier PCBP, sorry, and you found the ARS2 exon 16 is pretty much skipped, and you can quantify this, convert this with different PCR, and again, that's what we got. 
So then uh, we were trying to see whether PCPP is directly involved in the splicing event of the RS2. We used the clip assay and uh, we verified indeed does the PCBP it was already shown to bind to the UC uh, rich domain was uh, very predominantly in this uh, essay. And uh, it's also present in the intron, the Franken region exon, uh, Franken region of the RS2. So then you may curious and want to know what's the RS2. So this is adenine tRNA synthetase to its mitochondria. It was used to uh, control the translation, particularly the proof rating part of the uh, mitochondrial translation step. And the most interesting to us is the genetic mutation of the RS2 was reported in uh, infantile mitochondrial cardiomyopathy. There were about 29 cases reported so far most of from Denmark, from Germany, and uh, there was a couple of cases in Japan, China, and uh, they all pointed to those uh, cardiac defects uh, together with several other defects. So then we said, okay, it looks like uh, ARS2 is a time up. Uh, give me one more minute, maybe. Uh, <laughs> So, so, so they, um, we said, well, knock out of PCPP1 results in a splicing defect in those ARS2 splicing and uh, uh, human ARS2 mutation cause cardiomyopathy. Then we decided to generate this E16, uh, exon 16 mutation of ARS2. So this is just the, how we did it. And uh, we generated this we were able to get the uh, conventional knockout from the CRISPR approach and all of those conventional ARS2 knockout mice died very early. And then we used the flux diarrhea generated cardiac knockout and uh, to our surprise or maybe not, uh, the ARS2 cardiac specific knockout a phenocopy, the phenotype of PCPP knockout they have a development defect and also this by, by um, uh, copy of those uh, ven ventricle septum, you can see, and the compacting, uh, compacting zone defect. Then we're trying to get a little bit more of this. So we decided to sequence this uh, ARS2 cardiac knockout and uh, we uh, compare the transcriptome of the PCPP knockout of the RS2, I can, you can see the uh, gene hallmark enrichment or downregulated ones are pretty much perfectly overlap in those two, you know, typically and the gene signature. So that's pretty much where we are. We studied those two proteins. One is the RNA binding protein, apparently regulated the splicing of its downstream gene, PCPP regular RS2. Then when we have the PCPP um, mutation, it has uh, resulted in the exon 16 uh, skipping in the downstream target. And that result in the development defect, lung compactum cardiomyopathy, when we similarly generated this uh, uh, RS2 uh, knockout, uh, in this case, it's pretty much phenocopy to phenotype. So now we are continuing studying this, trying to understand our mental mechanism of this. And we are trying to reach out to this uh, uh, physicians, uh, trying to see whether uh, the ARS2 skipping, exon skipping mutation or point mutation resulting in the exon skipping and whether that is a cause for the infantile cardiomyopathy. So with that, I want to thank all my current and the former lab members and the many collaborators. Uh, we, they really support us. I mean, from my former mentor to many of the collaborators, of course, they support from uh, NHA or MDA. Um, it was very hard to do research, but uh, we, we were able to go through this. I think many of us, 
So now we have a new thing in warm sunshine, Florida. So this is where we are. I thank you so much for your attention. I'll be more than happy to answer questions. Thank you.